Now, so today I want to talk about topological sorting. Suppose you're given a graph like this, and you're asked to do a topological sorting. Well, one of the things to look for before you do topological sorting is to make sure you, that your graph G, vertices and edges, is acyclic, meaning uh, it has no cycles. Okay. You also want to make sure that the, the graph G is directed. Okay, and lastly, you want to do a DFS on it with timestamps, which is what we're going to do. So let me walk you through an example. This will be um, much more clear. Okay, suppose you're given a graph like this. <coughs> now, to start off, you want to look for a vertex that has no in degree. Okay, so and what that means is, let me define it up here. In degree means a vertex that has no edges going into it. Okay, so uh, like for example, C has no edges going into it. It just has two edges going out of it. Okay, so A would have in degree of one. <coughs> okay, and out degree of two. Okay. Now you want to start off with a vertex that has no in degree. So C is a good candidate. So C is discovered at time one. Okay. Then you look at all the outgoing edges from C. We have one to A and one to D. It doesn't really matter which one you go to, but let's stick with alphabetical order. So we'll go to A, and A is discovered at time two. Okay. Now similarly as C, A has um, two edges going out to B and D. And if we stick with alphabetical order, might as well go to B. And B is discovered at time three. Okay. Now B only has one edge going to E. So we take that because we haven't visited E yet. And so E is discovered at time 4. Now E is a loner, so it has no ed edges going out. So that finishes at time 5. Okay, we go back to its predecessor. Look at all the po other possibilities that B may go to. In this case, there are none. So we finish B at time 6. And we go back to its predecessor, which is A. And A has another edge going to D, which we haven't visited yet. So we go to D, and D is discovered at time 7. Okay. Now notice that we don't we didn't finish time, uh, timing for A because he had another edge going out. Okay. If this D was already discovered, then we we'll finish A. But in this case, it wasn't. So we go to D first, and we start the, uh, D is discovered at time 7 because B was the last one to finish at time 6. Okay. Now look, we look at uh, D, and he has two edges going out, one to B and one to E, and we already visited both of them, so we can't go there. And so we finish D at time 8. Okay. We go back to its predecessor, which is where we came from, which is A. And A has no other possibilities that we haven't visited yet. So we finish A at time 9. Okay. We go back to its predecessor. And then, well, we visited all the nodes, uh, all the vertices in the graph. So we finish C at time 10. Okay. So now you're done with DFS with timestamps. So now what you do is you want to line up on horizontally uh, edges from uh, vertices the finish greatest to least so C is the last one to finish so we list C first so let me change the color up here let me make it uh, uh let's go with pink okay so if C was the last one to finish and we write that down now we're looking for numbers on denominator not the numerator okay so the next number down is 9 which is on the denominator so we write down uh, A next okay then next one down down is eight. We do we have eight? Yes, it's D. So we write down D. Next one down is seven, but it's on a numerator, and it's on D as well. So we don't write that down. So next one down is six, which is B. So we write that down. Okay, and then <coughs> finally we have five, which is on the bottom, which is E. It's, it's also a last note. So we write down E. Then what you do is this horizontal vertices that you wrote down is going to be your guide. Okay. So you go to C, and then you look at all the edges that, uh, all the uh, vertices that C can reach. In this case, it's two A and D. So we draw an arrow from C to A, okay, and C to D, like so. Okay. Now we're done with C. We move on to A because that's our guide. And then we look at A. A can go to B and D. And so we draw an arrow from A to D, and A to B. Okay, next one up is D. D can go to B and E. 
so we join arrows from D to B and D to E okay then we go to B and B only has one arrow to E so we do that and then we go to E and E has no um, edges going out so we're done with topological sorting of this uh, graph so this is your end result right here And you can use topological sorting for things like, um, let's say, a pre prerequisite for a course you're taking or scheduling. And this is the reason why we can't have any cycles, because if you, you know, you can use this, um, you can use topological sorting for that kind of stuff. Then it would not make sense to have an edge going back to C. You know, it doesn't make sense because you need all these things. Like let's say, you need to take B, or you need to do B before you do E, or you, you need to do D before you do. E okay so if you have a back edge to let's say D it doesn't really make sense because that's just a cycle you know you can't just you know let's it, it, say if you were using topological sorting for dressing up you can't put out socks and then shorts and then put on socks again you know what I mean it doesn't make sense so that's topological uh, sorting